who is going to talk about uh, um, understanding exponential trajectory, balance growth, and cell size. Hello, uh, audible? Is it audible? In the back, audible? Yeah. Um, thanks very much uh, to the organizers for uh, inviting me to this stimulating meeting um, and giving me this opportunity to present some work. Um, I'll be talking about uh, some work that has been done um, uh, in Delhi with PhD students, Parth Pratim Pandey, Pooja Sharma, Harshad Singh, and uh, Shagun Nagpal Sethi Shagun, who is in the meeting, who has a poster up. Um, I'd like to talk about um, some theoretical questions related to uh, bacterial physiology um, and cells in general. Um, so uh, uh, first is uh, the origin of exponential growth and how come a nonlinear system uh, exhibits something which is characteristic of a linear system, uh, exponential growth. Um, how do cells, uh, as they grow, um, all the diverse chemicals which are all, whose dynamics is decentralized, how do they all manage to double together? How do they all manage to grow, um, uh, exhibit what's called balanced growth? Um, and uh, so this would be some general uh, sort of, uh, I'll talk about some structural properties of models um, which have these features. Um, uh, and how this kind of property might, these properties might arise. And then I will uh, briefly turn to some specific uh, things, you know, a class of models that I'll be describing. I'll uh, um, uh, show how bacterial growth laws arise uh, from uh, uh, an optimization principle. And if time permits, I, I will say something about uh, stochastic dynamics, um, about uh, uh, a timekeeper molecule, uh, the stochasticity of a timekeeper molecule uh, whose threshold uh, decides, uh, commits the cell to division. Um, the adder property uh, and uh, you know, intracellular molecular fluctuation patterns and so on. So, um, this is um, uh, the early result that suggests that single cells grow exponentially from birth to division in the, um, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, exponential cultures. Um, so um, uh, the uh, length of the cell in, on a logarithmic scale is plotted on the y-axis versus time from division. Um, on the x-axis, and these straight lines means that uh, cells are growing exponentially at a certain rate. Um, these uh, things have been measured in more uh, precision uh, in recent times. Um, of course, since the time that the cell uh, takes to divide only allows it a twofold growth, uh, uh, you know, this is, this is always a, uh, there could be other fits. Uh, Nevertheless, uh, an exponential fit seems to be quite good. And um, um, at least it's a working hypothesis that certain cells, certain bacterial cells, uh, grow exponentially um, in, 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 in time from birth to division. Um, now, so what kind of a description of cellular dynamics um, uh, can address questions like this. So a cell consists of lots of molecules of uh, various types, um, metabolites, uh, uh, amino acids, nucleotides, messenger RNA molecules, proteins, ribosomes of various kinds. And one description of the cell, uh, at, of the state of the cell at time t, is just 
the set of populations of all the molecular species. So there are, let's say, capital N molecules, distinct molecular species of various kinds inside the cell. And uh, we specify the number, how many molecules of each type. And you know, this is a, uh, again, this is a crude uh, uh, description of what's going on inside the cell, but it's a description which is, uh, 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 which is very useful, okay? Uh, and um, of course, these variables uh, xi of t, they are integers, they are uh, populations, so uh, you know, they are non-negative integers. Uh, and they change stochastically. Um, but it is uh, often convenient to write down uh, deterministic dynamics for uh, the change of their populations in the form dxi by dt, that is xi dot, is some function of the, uh, of, of the populations, of the populations at that time. Um, and um, these functions fi contain all the complexity of the cell, all the reactions and uh, uh, interactions and uh, uh, processes that are going on inside the cell. And these are uh, coming from uh, uh, reaction kinetics. They are highly nonlinear functions uh, uh, of the variables uh, uh, in question. So um, uh, exponential growth is a characteristic of linear systems. And here is the simplest possible um, system that one can talk about, a one-dimensional uh, variable, uh, a, a single variable system x, okay? Uh, dx by dt is uh, r, a positive constant, times uh, x to the alpha, where if alpha is one, uh, so that's a linear system, uh, x dot is equal to r of x, that's the central uh, picture, and uh, x grows exponentially, uh, if r is positive, and that's uh, a hallmark of a linear system. But if you depart from linearity, uh, let's say alpha becomes less than one, then the growth, uh, growth pattern, let's say uh, alpha is half, then the growth pattern is not exponential. Uh, it, uh, at large times, is given by a power uh, of, of, of time. And if alpha is greater than one, then um, it grows faster than exponential. And in, uh, 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 there is a finite time singularity that you can have uh, uh, in, in such things. So departure from linearity uh, means also departure from expon uh, exponential trajectories. Okay, that's a standard understanding. And what we are trying to understand is why uh, uh, do cells grow exponentially? Assuming that they do, assuming that, that approximation is correct, why do they grow exponentially um, uh, if they are described by nonlinear systems? So here um, is uh, a higher dimensional linear system. And again, because of linearity, um, you see exponential growth. So uh, here uh, you have n variables, but the functions fi are linear functions, a, i, j, x, j. So a is a matrix of uh, real numbers, let's say. Uh, and uh, that describes the dynamics. Uh, and um, now, uh, uh, in this case, uh, so one can represent it x as a column vector uh, and, and, and write down uh, the dynamics um, uh, in terms of a column vector and matrix. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of, uh, of A play an important role uh, uh, in this uh, uh, dynamics. And in particular, um, asymptotically, as time uh, uh, becomes large, uh, the uh, 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 dynamics x of t, the vector x of t, uh, is attracted to the eigenvector of A corresponding to its largest eigenvalue. So, x lambda are the eigenvectors of A, lambda are the eigen corresponding eigenvalues, and the largest of these, assuming it's real, okay, is the one that determines the uh, asymptotic uh, uh, behavior of, uh, of the traje trajectories. And uh, uh, in that asymptotic regime, uh, you get exponential behavior again. Uh, transients are mixtures of exponentials of different kinds, but uh, uh, once the system has, uh, once the transients are over, then there is exponential growth again. So in that sense, uh, you see exponential growth in, in this uh, linear system. And this is also an example of balanced growth. 
uh, because uh, um, the largest eigenvector, uh, it has some components which are fixed because A is a fixed matrix. So uh, X uh, is a fixed uh, vector. Uh, X lambda 1 uh, is a fixed vector. And therefore, it's, comp uh, it's a fixed vector up to, scale, up to uh, normalization. And therefore, the ratios of its components uh, are constant. And so once you have gotten onto this attractor, once you've gotten to this eigenvector, um, all the populations, all the variables x, uh, are increasing with the same rate. Okay? They are increasing, increasing in proportion to each other. They're all growing exponentially with the same rate. It's an example of balanced growth. So uh, for a linear, for, for, for a cell, um, uh, just to take a nonlinear example, just to consider a concrete nonlinear example, we'll consider a particular coarse-grained coarse uh, model of a cell um, described by three variables. Um, uh, so x is a, uh, uh, is a triple. Uh, uh, and uh, these are, uh, 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 the populations are P of T, denoted P of T, capital T of T, and capital R of T. So P uh, uh, is supposed to be the pool of uh, uh, precursors of macromolecules, that is amino acids. Let's take P to be just the amino acid pool. Uh, T of T uh, are, is the pool of all uh, transporter and other metabolic enzymes, which bring in the food and convert it to amino acids. Okay? That's, that's what T does. Uh, and R is the pool of ribosomes. Uh, it's the number of ribosomes, uh, uh, which uh, catalyze the production of uh, uh, T as well as themselves from P, from, from the amino acids. Okay? So that's uh, a coarse-grained version of the model, uh, of, of the set of variables. Um, and um, Here uh, is a possible set of equations that one might use uh, to describe uh, 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 certain aspects of the cell. Um, so um, the box brackets, of course, denote concentrations uh, of, of these uh, pools. Uh, and uh, without box brackets, it's uh, populations. And uh, I will sometimes use uh, box brackets for concentrations and sometimes use lowercase letters for for concentrations, um, uh, and capital letters for populations. So um, uh, the amino acids are produced um, uh, by uh, the transporter and metabolic enzymes. Um, and Kp uh, is a proportionality constant uh, that uh, represents many things. It repre represents uh, the um, uh, uh, efficiencies of these enzymes, of this enzyme pool. It represents uh, the nature of the medium, etc. So KP uh, is doing uh, uh, many duties there. Um, that's the production term for amino acids. And amino acids are used up uh, to make proteins and uh, ribosomes. So uh, uh, in proportion to their, uh, uh, their concentrations, P concentration and R concentration with some rate constant K. Um, and um, uh, that results, of course, in the production of T and R. And uh, the positive terms are, of course, of the same type, uh, 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 proportional to the R and uh, P concentration. And uh, the, the rate constants uh, are proportional, uh, are, are uh, in some sense fractions of, uh, so, so FT and FR are the fraction of ribosomes uh, that are making uh, uh, respectively, the transporter and enzymes, that's FT, and uh, um, the ribosomes, uh, that's FR. These are, uh, at the moment, parameters of the model. Uh, and MT and MR are the number of uh, amino acids used up in each uh, uh, transporter molecule or enzyme molecule, that's MT, and MR is the number of uh, amino acids used up uh, to make a ribosome. So that's uh, uh, explains uh, those kinds of equations. And uh, I just want to uh, I've put this up here in part because uh, I wanted to just say that uh, uh, this is a nonlinear model because the right-hand side has quadratic terms. Uh, and uh, uh, it's more complicated than, um, uh, than linear. And in models of this kind, uh, which are nonlinear, 
uh, you do not expect. I mean, uh, even, even for a single variable, you don't expect exponential growth. Uh, but models of this kind, uh, which, which have uh, uh, many variables and are nonlinear, you don't expect exponential growth. Now, we are in an expanding cell, so therefore, um, we must add the dilution terms to all, the, uh, to, uh, to all these three equations. And these dilution terms are minus V dot by V into the respective concentration. So those are the equations on the right-hand side. And uh, that's typically the kind of starting point that we have in, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, this coarse grain modeling of, of uh, uh, cells. Now, it's important to uh, note that this dynamic, supposing I've, I know all the constants, uh, Kp, K, uh, Ft, Mt, Fr, etc., cetera, uh, everything. Supposing I know those, and I start with some initial uh, concentration, this dynamics does not tell me how to do it because it's not completed yet, because V dot by V has not been specified. So V dot by V is appearing in this dynamics, but we don't know what it is. And V dot by V, uh, is the growth rate, which I will be denoting by mu, um, uh, of the cell. And uh, you know, if, uh, if the cell is expanding, then mu is a function of time. Um, and um, unless one specifies that as a function of time, we have not specified the dynamics, and we can't really integrate it, and can't really find out the trajectories of things. So we need to specify this. But we don't want to do it exogenously by just assuming uh, that v dot by v is some constant mu or, or, or lambda, or uh, uh, that will be then determined later. We want the dynamics to tell us what the growth rate will be of the cell. And therefore, uh, this v dot by v has to be determined in some uh, endogenous way. And uh, what I will do in the next slide, where the model will be completely described, um, uh, is that this v dot by v, this mu, it will turn out to be, uh, be in the model, a function of the concentrations themselves. So uh, all these P, T, and R with box brackets, mu will turn out to be a function. And that function has to be substituted here. And then that specifies the dynamics completely. That function will be explicitly specified. And that then specifies the dynamics, which you can then use to integrate uh, 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 these equations. The system will be completely defined. So in order to do that, uh, I first want to think in terms of populations instead of concentrations. So um, the populations xi are uh, just the concentrations times the volume. And therefore, the d by dt of xi uh, has two terms uh, in which you uh, differentiate the uh, concentration and one in which you differentiate the volume with respect to time. And for the first term, uh, you can use the equations that we had on, uh, uh, on, on, uh, on, the, on the previous slide. And you, uh, uh, so, when, so, so when you do that, uh, you find that uh, the v dot term, so there is a v dot term which existed in, in that equation on the, on the left hand side, uh, on, on, the, on the previous slide. That was the v dot by v terms, right? These v dot by v terms cancel the new v dot term that, that is there uh, on, on the right hand side of this equation. And you get see even simpler looking e equations for the populations. So, um, so, that's, uh, so those are the equations that you get for all the populations. But notice that even this is not well defined because it, it contains v, and we have not specified what v is. So, so that's something that uh, uh, we would like to do. And this is where um, I will make a, uh, a key assumption, that we will take v to be, in this case, a linear function of the, uh, of the populations themselves. So v is an extensive kind of variable, and uh, uh, it can be expressed in terms of populations, but not in terms of concentrations directly. So v, uh, 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 that's why we have gone to the uh, population level. We express v in terms of the populations as a linear function. In general, I will be considering v to be a homogeneous degree one function of, uh, of the populations. Okay. And this is going to be an ingredient of the model. And these constants Vp, Vt, Vr are therefore also parameters of the model. Okay. Model is not specified without that. Okay. So, um, uh, and these constants, it will turn out, uh, affect everything 
uh, that the cell does. So, um, so let's take a particular case uh, in which uh, uh, all the v's are, little v's are equal. Uh, and so I can just take it out as a, a capital V is some little v, some constant parameter of the model, times p plus t plus r as a particular case. And now you can see that with this choice, both the models, uh, both the versions of the model, uh, the population as well as the concentration uh, is completely defined, are completely defined. Because uh, if you were to now calculate, so the, uh, the population version is clearly defined because you've specified V. But as far as the concentration version is concerned, note that V dot by V, since V is, since capital V is uh, little v into P plus T plus R, so you have uh, V dot, capital V dot by V, is, is given by uh, that expression, uh, uh, little v by, ca uh, by capital V, into p dot plus t dot plus r dot. And we know what p dot, t dot, and r dot are from those equations, are, uh, from those equations. So you can substitute that. And um, so the p dot term, there is a kpt term. And when divided by the v, which is sitting in this expression, it'll become kp into box t. And then, um, uh, there are the quadratic terms, p, r by v terms, uh, in each of those uh, p dot, t dot, and r dot, and they will all combine. Um, and notice that there was a volume factor that was sitting there before. That volume factor will be augmented by another volume factor that is coming in the definition of mu uh, in the denominator. And so you will get concentration of p, concentration of r, multiplied by the constants. Okay, so that's, uh, you have expressed uh, the, uh, the growth rate in terms of concentrations, okay? This particular choice, this linear, this choice of V being linear uh, in the populations is crucial to be able to express mu as a function of the concentrations, okay? So if it was not, then uh, uh, it, it would depend, uh, not, uh, it, would, it would involve populations themselves and not just concentrations. So now, uh, once we have this mu, you can substitute this back uh, in, this, uh, in this equation, uh, in these three equations, and now the concentration dynamics is defined and self-contained, okay? So you have dynamics which has been defined at both levels, at the level of the populations and at the level of the concentrations, and uh, they are both consistent with each other. Um, uh, uh, okay, so that's, that's, that's what we've done. And now you can, of course, uh, start uh, this dynamics off with any concentration, initial concentration of the three chemicals. And you can ask uh, what the concentrations will do. So notice, I mean, uh, so this is, an, this is a cell that is growing, maybe, uh, whose volume is changing, okay? Uh, but the concentrations themselves have a dynamics of their own, okay, given by this, but notice, that the dynamics has been crucially modified by what we've done on the, on the next slide. It's not as straightforward as, uh, as it appears here. These V dot by V terms are themselves concentration dependent. And in that particular case, V dot by V uh, had a linear term and a quadratic term, which makes this um, uh, dynamics even more nonlinear. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the structure uh, that we have of, uh, of this dynamics. Now, imagine that you have some concentration dynamics, some nonlinear uh, concentration dynamics, and we can analyze it by the usual tools um, of dynamical systems. And uh, you know, we will be looking for fixed points, we will be looking for stable fixed points, we might be looking for uh, unstable fixed points, we might be looking for limit cycles or various kinds of attractors of this concentration dynamics. And let us say that you have, um, you found some fixed point of this dynamics, which is a stable fixed point. Let's call that stable fixed point P star, T star, R star. Okay, that's our stable fixed point of, uh, of, this, of this dynamics. Okay. The moment you have a stable fixed point of this dynamics, you have the following situation. Since, so what, what would happen, what would happen to the system after it has reached that fixed point? So once the system has reached that fixed point, P star, R star, uh, P star, T star, R star, 
Then, uh, after that, of course, being a fixed point, being a stable fixed point, these would not change with time. And therefore, mu has become a constant in time. So once the system reaches that fixed point, mu becomes independent of time, which means that v dot by v, which is mu, is independent of time, and therefore v increases exponentially with time. Okay, so v uh, will, 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 will have the behavior, uh, uh, you know, something like, uh, uh, you know, v naught e to the mu star. So mu star is the, is, is the value of mu uh, at, at the fixed point. So we will have some kind of a behavior like that, where the zero of time, uh, let's say, is, is the time where uh, once it has reached the fixed point. Okay, so that's from, from, from there you start. Uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, we will then, uh, from there on, increase exponentially. And it is clear that all the other variables must also increase exponentially. Uh, they must increase exponentially because uh, 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 V is, after all, a linear function of PT and R. And if V uh, is increasing exponentially and P by V, T by V, R by V, they are all constants, then it must be that P, T, and R are also increasing exponentially at the same rate. So, uh, so we have found a situation uh, using this uh, approach where the very existence of a stable fixed point of the concentration dynamics that we have constructed means that we have constructed an exponentially growing trajectory of the cell okay, um, uh, in time. And uh, although we have a nonlinear system here, we have uh, been able to construct exponentially growing uh, trajectories. And uh, the crucial ingredient here, of course, was this key assumption here. Okay? Um, uh, it is with that that we are able to uh, uh, have nonlinear uh, uh, dynamical systems which still uh, never, uh, you know, obey uh, uh, exponential uh, uh, trajectories. Okay? And these if, if the fixed point is an attractive fixed point, then these trajectories would be um, attractive uh, trajectories for the population dynamics as well. Okay? And um, uh, so, uh, you know, one can actually do this uh, for uh, this PTR uh, model. Uh, and if you just simulate it at some choice of parameters um, with the different initial conditions, so the top two uh, 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 plots are at different starting PT and R with different initial conditions. There is some transient, and then you can see that on a semi-log plot, uh, they are growing linearly with the same slope. So they are all growing exponentially at the same rate, yes. Yes, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you a simulation uh, uh, later in which you can choose the volume to be, let's say, um, two-thirds the power of the surface area of the cell. <laughs> you can say that the surface area is proportional to, let's say, T. Okay? Uh, and uh, you can say, let's say, supposing you were to say that V being instead, um, yeah, maybe I should, uh, yeah, I, I'll show you those uh, simulations. And, you know, if you do that, if you depart from, um, uh, from uh, uh, from linearity, or in general, homoge homogeneous degree one character uh, of, of of the function v, uh, then you find that you don't have um, you know things reaching constant ratios uh, asymptotically. Uh, they don't get attracted to being constant ratios. You can see in the lower two curves here, the ratios t by r and p by r uh, doesn't matter what initial condition you start from. Uh, this is a model in which the concentration dynamics has one uh, stable fixed point. This is a simple uh, example um, uh, in which it has one stable fixed point, uh, and, uh, uh, which is a global attractor of the entire uh, uh, phase space. Uh, and uh, um, so it doesn't matter what initial condition you start with. Once the parameters are fixed, you tend to that, those particular uh, ratios. The concentrations are fixed. Okay, so... Um, so that's what you 
you end up with, which you do not if the volume does not satisfy this property. So I'd, li I'd like to demystify this as to why uh, we are getting uh, exponential trajectories in a nonlinear system, OK? And the reason is that this particular choice of V has rendered our dynamics closely related to linear systems, OK? So these are nonlinear, but homogeneous degree one uh, function. So uh, our dynamics, let's write down our population dynamics, which are the ones which are growing exponentially. Of course, concentrations are going to a fixed point. Um, so it's the populations that are growing exponentially. So let's write down xi dot in terms of these functions fi, OK? And look at these functions, f1, f2, f3, for p, you know, p dot, t dot, r dot, respectively, uh, that, that we have. Okay? These functions have the following property, that if you scale all the variables, all the three variables by the same parameter beta, okay, then these functions also scale by the same uh, 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 single power of beta. Okay? So that's, uh, that's the feature that they have. Um, so uh, that's why they, uh, I'm referring to them as homo homogeneous degree one functions. And uh, we'll see in a later slide that this is a consequence, uh, of course, as you, I mean, you can see that it is a consequence of uh, uh, V being uh, linear. It, because V is linear, it scales linearly with beta. Yes. Is that, is that the same as saying that uh, reaction rates actually depend on concentrations? Is that the same statement? It is. Uh -huh. <laughs> it is the same statement. I will, I will just elaborate on that. Yes, indeed. That's, that's what it is. That's cool. It. OK. <clears throat> so, um, um, OK. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so this is what uh, we have, this, this, this character. And whenever you have this character of uh, a set of nonlinear differential equations, uh, which is uh, defined by homogeneous degree one functions, then um, uh, you always have, uh, you can always find exponentially growing solutions. You can substitute an ansatz, xi of t is equal to xi of 0 e to the mu t, where mu is the same for all the i's, okay? Same mu for all the i's, all growing exponentially at the same rate. And you can take this ansatz and plug it into that equation, the uh, uh, differential equation. The left-hand side is mu times xi of 0 e to the mu t, trivially, by differentiating this ansatz. And the right-hand side, you have to substitute the ansatz. And when you substitute the ansatz, it has n arguments, but each one of them has this factor e to the mu t. And this e to the mu t is like our beta, right? So since it is multiplying all the arguments, and since our function has this homogeneous degree one property, we can use it to scale it out of the function. That's the last uh, step of the second last line. Okay. So it scales out. And therefore, you can see that e to the mu t cancels out from both left and right hand sides. And you are left with a condition on the, on the assumed mu in the ansatz on the growth rate and the initial conditions from which, you st uh, which you've started. So, this means that if you start with certain initial conditions, okay, there, is a, uh, there is a set of initial conditions which you can discover by solving these equations. These will typically be algebraic equations. The last equation, mu xi of 0 is equal to fi x1 of 0, x2 of 0, xn of 0. Um, uh, we typically, uh, for mass action, kinetics, and so on, a uh, set of algebra algebraic equations, uh, no time. Uh, and, and you can, uh, uh, you know, so how many unknowns are there? There are actually, uh, it might seem that there are n plus 1 unknowns, mu and x1 to xn, but actually um, there are only n unknowns here, okay, that you can determine from these, uh, because uh, uh, 
you can only determine the ratios x1 of 0 uh, to, uh, to uh, all the others because of this property of, of f. So I'm calling this the generalized eigenvalue equation because um, for the special case where these functions are linear, okay? So let's say uh, fi was uh, what we had earlier. Uh, fi of x is aij xj. Then what does that equation look like? That equation looks like mu xi of 0 is equal to aij xj 0 summed over j. Right? That's, that's what that equation is because I simply have to substitute it in the function. Sorry. The last equation on the left hand side is mu xi of 0 and the right hand side is fi at uh, uh, the, the, the initial point. Okay? So if we do that, that equation is nothing but the eigenvalue equation of the A matrix. Okay? And uh, for a linear system, uh, that naturally comes out, of course. And we know that every eigenvector of A, uh, assuming it's a real eigenvector, defines a direction. Uh, and if you start from that direction, then you will keep going exponentially uh, at a rate lambda i uh, in that direction for a linear system. We know that. Okay? Um, so something like that is what is happening for this nonlinear system. This equation, the right hand side is nonlinear. It's not linear in the x's, or, uh, in, the un, uh, in the variables x1, 0, x2, 0, xn, 0. It's not, uh, it's not uh, linear. It's a nonlinear. So it's a, some kind of a nonlinear generalization of, uh, um, of, of the eigenvalue equation of a matrix. And I don't know whether such structures, I would be curious to know in case someone knows, whether such structures have been um, studied by mathematicians uh, in, in some context or somebody else in some context. But they seem to very naturally arise uh, in the context of uh, uh, bacterial physiology in, 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 in this way of thinking. Okay. So, uh, uh, anyway. Uh, uh, right. So, here I'm just pointing out that if you define the ratios uh, of, uh, of the xi's, psi i is, is, is given by um, uh, xi by xn. You've divided every, everything by the last uh, xn. Okay, um, then uh, that, that, that same equation uh, is, uh, you know, uh, you can write it down uh, in terms of, uh, 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 so now there are explicitly n minus 1 ratios and 1 mu, and you can see that you have n equations for these n variables, and generically, uh, you could find a solution. Of course, you have to find a feasible solution in which these um, x's are non-negative, if they are populations, and if you want a growing solution, you want mu to be real and positive, and so on, things like that. But uh, uh, you know, in general, you have n equations and n unknowns, and there would be generically solutions for that. And those solutions, those solutions are exactly, uh, it turns out, the fixed points of uh, uh, the, the ratios. I mean, as far as the ratios are concerned, at, at, at those solutions, uh, you can find out uh, 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 xi by v. Uh, uh, and, and, and that's the, the concentration. So those are precisely the fixed point, uh, the, the concentration fixed points. Okay. So um, this set of x's which solves this equation, it defines a line which passes through the origin of this n-dimensional space. So we have this phase space, which is n-dimensional, and you have um, a solution of this that defines a line, and what uh, this means is that if your initial conditions lie on that line, um, you will have exponential trajectories. Uh, all, the, all the x's will grow uh, exponentially with the same growth rate mu. So it's a very special curve in your n-dimensional space, which is this, initial, which is this uh, you know, line of balanced growth, if you like. right? But um, um, uh, uh, the point is that that is an attractor of the dynamics. So you can start from anywhere. Uh, if your fixed point is a stable fixed point, then that is an attractor of the dynamics. And you can start from anywhere, and you will converge uh, to this line. Okay, That's what's happening. So here I will uh, uh, address uh, uh, precisely uh, the point as to uh, uh, how this class one uh, property is arising. Okay. And what I want to say is that it's, 
it is simply a consequence of two things. That um, the rate of change of concentration is a function of concentrations. Okay? Point number one that you mentioned. And the second point is that V is a homogeneous degree one function of the x's. Okay? So uh, we started with uh, some particular functions G1, G2, G3 in the PTR model. But now let's be general. Some nonlinear function of the concentrations. Okay? So little xi denote concentrations now. And capital XI will denote the populations. So little XI dot, uh, you know, this is uh, mass action kinetics. You can include Michaelis Menten, uh, whatever uh, 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 one is interested in, as long as it's a function of the concentration. In an expanding volume, you will add the minus V dot by V XI term, which we did. And then in the capital, uh, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the population language, um, when you write down the equations, the equations will, uh, you know, the V dot by v, v term will cancel out, and you will have equations xi dot is equal to V times gi of little x. Okay, capital X i is, is given by that, okay? And now, let's assume that the volume V is some function of the populations. So then, we can write down capital X i uh, as a function of uh, capital X i dot, as a function of the capital X's, to complete that dynamical system, okay? Uh, we can do that by plugging in V as a function of X into uh, the above equation. And that's what I'm calling this function capital, uh, little fi of, of X. That's uh, the other ones that we wrote down earlier for, for the PTR model. So, so these are the functions fi. And we need to ask whether these functions have this homo homogeneous degree one property or not. And the claim is that they will Always, doesn't matter what the form of G is. It's not that we've taken some very special dynamics uh, and, and we are getting this homogeneous degree one property. It's generically going to arise, always, okay? It will, provided V itself is a homogeneous degree, degree, degree one function uh, of, of its arguments. So that's the uh, last line of the proof. Then, so, so basically this property is, uh, 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 you know, uh, you can see where this property is coming from and it's very generic. So, the key assumption here again, I want to emphasize, is this linearity or homogeneous degree one character of V, which is giving us exponential trajectories and uh, you know, which, which is uh, uh, giving us this, uh, uh, this, this character. Okay. So just to uh, note a couple of points, that the solution to that uh, generalized eigenvalue equation uh, any feasible solution of that one gives us a quote unquote line of balanced growth, I already mentioned, okay? Um, uh, a special set of initial conditions. And uh, um, uh, I've already mentioned that to every stable point, there corresponds a line of balanced growth to which the populations are attracted. And notice here that we've not assumed any regulatory mechanism. So things are growing, they're growing in a coordinated way, they're all growing with the same ratios, okay? Um, it is being assumed here that all the components of this vector, x10, x20, x30, they are all non-zero, so that all the populations are growing, and that actually requires a further assumption of a kind of a autocatalytic nature of the whole uh, system, such that um, uh, every, uh, 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 every chemical species is being created uh, somewhere in that system, okay? Then you will have all the components non-zero, and all of them will then be growing exponentially at that same rate, okay? And so one point is that no regulatory mechanism is needed, so it's a very generic mechanism. Um, and uh, there's no fine tuning involved here. Uh, it's uh, 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 as long as uh, V has this property, this, uh, it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll work. And notice that the constants in V, they do affect uh, things. So just to, Remind you that, uh, that in this equation for mu, we had this little v uh, sitting out here. But if we had vp, vt, and vr, you know, those uh, uh, constants would also have been sitting here. 
and they would have affected the growth rate, they would have affected the uh, uh, eigenvector components and so on. They would have, uh, you know, they, they are uh, observables in, in that sense. They, they are affecting our, our, our observables, okay? So that's, uh, that's an important thing. This, uh, bringing in this linear ansatz for V is not harmless in that sense. It is, it is actually in introducing some new parameters that matter to the dynamics. Okay, so uh, now, uh, yeah, so you know, you can write down a much more complicated model. Uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 we wrote down uh, one which had about 30 odd cellular variables with, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of 40 odd interactions and so on. Uh, and we wrote down a set of equations and just put it on the computer. And because it was class one, uh, because it was this homogeneous degree one, okay, uh, uh, we found that, uh, uh, again, you know, for this uh, complicated model, it's, it's a very generic thing that, that that's, that's going to happen, okay? That um, you, you had these exponential trajectories and balanced growth. On the other hand, um, in this example, uh, uh, we, uh, this is the one that I mentioned that you change the, uh, homogeneous degree one character of V, V is now T to the two thirds instead of a linear function. And what you find is that, uh, you know, there is no, uh, it's not going to any constant uh, ratios uh, uh, asymptotically. So uh, I uh, will now, so, you know, this is the gen generalities about uh, these homogeneous degree one uh, systems and how uh, they might help us to understand uh, the phenomenon of balanced growth and exponential trajectories in a generic fashion. I will uh, now briefly, uh, since time uh, is short, uh, I will uh, uh, mention that this PTR model that uh, I introduced uh, in this talk as an illustration of, uh, uh, of, of this uh, homogeneous degree one, um, is actually a model uh, that can teach us a few things. I mean, teach us in the sense that at least it uh, um, allows us a very explicit uh, working out of things, okay? So uh, it's an exactly solvable model. Uh, you can actually work out explicit analytical expressions um, for the growth rate and uh, uh, all the ratios. Uh, so in spite of the nonlinearity, you, uh, you can just work, work those out. And, um, uh, uh, because you can work out the ratios, you can also talk about uh, the ribosomal fraction, uh, which is uh, uh, phi r is mr r by mt t plus mr r. And if you fix all the parameters of the model, which include uh, uh, the ones that, that, that were listed earlier, including the fr and the ft, which add up to one, um, and the v's and all that stuff, um, uh, if you do that, then you don't see any growth laws. Okay. Uh, and uh, you just get something. Uh, so uh, uh, you, for example, get uh, phi r is equal to fr plus some other terms that depend upon. So uh, in, in these formulae, I've introduced death rates for uh, the t and the, uh, uh, the r uh, species, uh, dt and dr. So one can uh, so, uh, solve it analytically uh, with, with, with those, okay? And uh, 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 you get something which if you keep all the other parameters fixed, I mean, if you keep as long, you can keep changing the other parameters, like for example, K or, or KP. KP was the medium, uh, the medium and the efficiency of the enzymes, and K uh, was the efficiency of the um, ribosomes. So you can change them, but uh, nothing happens to, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, case where DT and DR is zero, uh, uh, you know, phi R is just fixed. So there's no growth loss seen. And you see growth laws, however, here, uh, if you employ an optimization principle, if you say that given that this parameter f, fr, ft plus fr is, is one, but if this parameter fr is the one that the cell is actually regulating in some fashion or the other, and uh, you say that, uh, 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 you assume that the cell is always tuning this parameter in such a way that when all the other parameters are fixed, this parameter is chosen so that you get the maximal growth rate. If you make that assumption, 
then you find that uh, you can analytically derive uh, 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 the growth uh, the, the growth laws, which uh, um, uh, uh, Scott et al. Uh, have uh, discussed. Yeah, uh, so you know you can get uh, uh, these kinds of uh, of things from this. I just wanted to mention this, um, and of course you can uh, uh, you know make the model more complicated by uh, adding the, uh, the Q sector. That's not much of a complication, and you know you can do various other things uh, with it. Uh, and um, uh, okay, so that's some of those things uh, uh, Shagun has on her poster that uh, she is trying to uh, get around. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, notice that this model, um, you know, if you if you look at the model originally, yeah. So here uh, the equations are the uh, are the same as the PTR model, although this is the volume is, is defined differently in this case. But just to have the equation on the board, um, the peptide elongation rate is actually not k, but it's k times p by v. Uh, so uh, uh, it's also a dynamical variable in the model. It's not a fixed constant in the model. And um, uh, one of the results that uh, Chagun has observed is that uh, as you increase uh, the growth rate, uh, this has qualitatively uh, an increase and in saturating character. But the amount of increase is, is, is not by a factor of two. Uh, it's uh, uh, um, much less. So uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, this is a very simple model. And uh, so it's not expected to reproduce um, uh, all the nice, all, all the features that uh, we would like. So uh, at any rate, I will uh, then briefly mention some other things that we've done uh, in terms of extending this, the model. That uh, we added a timekeeper molecule, which we called Z. So uh, there is this X sector, which is the PTR sector, and it can contain other, other things, whatever, uh, which is homogeneous degree 1. Um, but then there is this other molecule, which is which can which is uh, which is a molecule whose uh, uh, um, <laughs> uh, so how, how much, how, I'll wrap up in two or three minutes. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, this timekeeper molecule um, is uh, yeah. So. Anyway, so there are these. So it has, uh, you know, it's also produced some protein, let's say, uh, and it is produced, uh, you know, in, in the same way as, uh, let's say, T is same kind of dynamics, okay, uh, homogeneous degree one. And uh, this molecule, however, uh, has the role in the cell that when it reaches a critical value Z C, uh, the cell divides or commits itself to division, OK? Um, and when it divides, then uh, all the xi's are halved. And z might also be halved, but it might also be reset to some other value, which we are calling zb. Yeah. So, um, so you can do this. This is motivated by DNA A uh, type uh, dynamics, OK? And, uh, uh, Anyway, uh, so you can, uh, again, uh, uh, analytically solve this uh, with the PTR model, when the X sector is the PTR model. Uh, and, uh, uh, and now, of course, we are talking of stochastic dynamics, because uh, uh, Z, uh, uh, OK, the, the dynamics of Z, is, we are interested in cell-to-cell -cell variability here. And so uh, you can do stochastic dynamics, and, and uh, uh, Z, uh, in order to reach its threshold, will take a variable amount of time. And so you will have an interdivision time uh, um, variability and uh, birth volume and uh, um, division volume variability. 
So you can work out those things. And we compared this uh, with the data of, uh, uh, oh, I've not mentioned that, Taheri uh, Aragi uh, et al., Sakchun Jun's group. Um, and what we found was that it matches the, 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 the data best when this uh, value, Zc, is between, um, is, is of the order of you know, 20 to 60, okay? That's the range in which it matches the data best. Uh, it reproduces, I mean, it matches uh, uh, to a fair extent the uh, other distributions, but it doesn't reproduce the growth rate uh, distribution uh, uh, very well, okay? Um, so there's something else happening in the growth rate distribution which we, it reproduces the adder property. Um, and also, this mechanism you can use to uh, address this question, which was raised by the work of uh, Tani Guchi et al., uh, where uh, you know, they uh, measured uh, um, protein number fluctuations. And they found this crossover from intrinsic noise to some what, something that they call extrinsic noise. And this behavior is actually reproduced by this model. You can put in another protein uh, in the dynamics and uh, study its uh, number fluctuations. And of course, at uh, uh, small numbers, it has the universal fluctuations. But it also has this crossover. Um, because uh, at some point, um, uh, uh, the, its variability is set by this timekeeper Z molecule. Uh, so. Uh, that is what determines its, uh, so, so what is considered extrinsic noise is actually uh, uh, something which is a, a part of the cell itself, which is this uh, generated noise generated by cell. Okay. So I will um, conclude um, by uh, summarizing that uh, uh, this mechanism for exponential trajectories and balanced growth is probably also relevant for protocells. Uh, because uh, protocells also, uh, near the origin of life, uh, needed to have identity, and so they needed to have uh, uh, maintain their composition across generations. Um, so uh, because it is very generic, uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, dynamics, maybe uh, it was used by protocells, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, I'd like to uh, emphasize that, uh, you know, it, it's, perhaps relevant to, um, to work out uh, uh, empirical consequences of the new parameters, the VIs that, the VI, uh, that, that, that have been introduced. And um, well, uh, simple models of this type uh, are possibly useful for uh, bacterial physiology. Uh, and uh, um, uh, they are uh, at least very explicit and, and, and uh, um, uh, clean, at least in the sense that you, uh, the assumptions are all on the table and they're explicit, okay? Um, okay, thank you very much. <laughs>